Hi and welcome to part 6 of the Let's Play A Link to the Past randomized version. Last time we entered the Dark World and beat the first Dark World dungeon by navigating this maze. If you look on the map you can see that um, this little bit here is where we now are. And the blinking crystals are the other maidens that we have to rescue. But last time we entered the maze, uh, or the first dungeon, by uh, doing a maze here. And it can be a little difficult or time consuming to walk all the way through the maze back again. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the mirror to return to the light world. And see, now we're in the exact same place. But there's no maze in here, so we can just exit normally. But our entrance here to the dark world, back to the dark world, is that sparkly thing. But if you remember correctly, um, when we were on Death Mountain a few episodes ago, there was a tile on the floor that transported us to the dark world. A blue tile. Well, come on. Let's get some health. There we go. Sorry for that. Okay, as I was saying, there was a blue tile there. And there are tiles like that, hidden throughout Hyrule. And usually they're in places where, uh, that you couldn't get to before, like this. Uh, you need the hammer to go uh, inside here, because you have to pound down these stakes, and then you can get in the middle of this circle. And if you lift this rock, there's one of those shiny blue tiles, which transports us back to the Dark World. So there are fixed places all around the map that transport you back to the Dark World. But using the mirror, you can choose where to go back to the Light World at any time. As long as you're not inside a tree or a bush or whatever. So we can exploit that mechanic. We're going to do so in this episode before we go to the next dungeon. Let me first get some health back. Because you can do all sorts of uh, fun things with the Dark World Light World mechanic. And I'm going to show you, of course. There we go. Alright. Let's see. Let's kill these guys first and I'll explain what we're going to do. Okay, normally you're supposed to go down here, because you now have the hammer, you can pound these things and cross the bridge. But we're not going to do that yet, because we have some items that we normally don't get until much later. We can uh, do a little detour this time. And I'm showing you what I mean. Just let me kill these guys up ahead. Alrighty. I'm going to lift this rock. And here you have this little entrance that you can jump down to. But if you look closely on the left side, you see these uh, skulls on the opposite side of the river. We can use the hook shot to latch onto those. And now we're in a spot we normally can't get to yet. Which is nice. And we're here at the uh, graveyard. And here's the first place that we can exploit the dark world light. What we can, and I'll show you in a moment. Let me just get up there. Alrighty. And let's... Okay, here it is. There's a ladder here that seemingly goes to nowhere. But if I return to the light world briefly... We'll see what's up with this place. See, in the light world there is a cave there, but no ladder. So we can exploit that by moving to the dark world, going up the ladder, and then using the mirror. So we can now enter the cave we couldn't before. And see if there's an item there. Okay. This is a wall we can bomb, so let's do that. There we go. Ah, and normally there's a piece of heart here, I think, but now just the red rupee. Too bad. But your randomized version could be different, and if you're playing the original version, then uh, you get a piece of heart there, I think. 
Okay, so let's return to the dark world. And I'll show you another spot. There we go. Alright, and to the left of the cemetery, to the west of the cemetery, is uh, the place where the sanctuary was in the light world. I'm not going to go there yet. First, we're going to return to the place where the lumberjacks were in the light world. I had a feeling that was a skull stone that was alive. Not all of them are alive, but uh, usually you find them uh, in a lot of places. Okay, this is the place where the... Uh, oh. Let's kill that guy first, okay. This is the place where the entrance was to the dark, uh, Death Mountain in the Light World and also in the Dark World. There is a cave here. And normally I think there's a piece of heart on top of there and that's just a rupee with 300 rupees, but it's useful nonetheless, so let's uh, get that. You enter the cave. Defeat these buggers. And you do need the hook shot, hook shot for this uh, bit, by the way. Because there is this chasm here, but if you see uh, closely, you see those skull pots on the other side, so... Do the same trick, latch on to those. Okay, and this bit, normally this bumper knocks you uh, back, but since we have the invisibility cape, we can use that to pass. So if you don't have the hookshot or the invisibility cape, this won't work, unfortunately. And we find the item on top of here. In my case, it's just 300 rupees. Very nice, but uh, not a big deal. Okay, now let's return to the light world. Okay, and jump down, because there's one more thing we can get. The two lumberjacks were up here a few episodes ago. They were cutting down this tree, and if you play the English version, they say the tree feels a little weird when they cut it. Well, now the lumberjacks are uh, no longer cutting, so we can find out what it was by running into the tree. And you see the tree was hollow. So now we can explore it and get an item. If you go uh, up there, you can find a few fairies, but we don't have the bug catching net yet, so... Oh, look, cool. There's a medallion. We already have one, which is, I think, the fire medallion. Oh, I can't use it now. I'll show you in a minute. This was the fire medallion we had already. It clears a room uh, with explosions and fire, also very nice. And now we found this medallion. And it shoots all sorts of lightning bolts and things, which is also very handy. There are three medallions. They use a lot of magic, but they come in uh, handy. And one of them opens the uh, one of the dungeons in the dark world, so we really need all of them. show you another entrance to the dark world and it's fairly uh, relatively easy you just have to get to the castle so let's go there now get around here cross the bridge And this entrance is uh, usually one of the first ones people discover. Alrighty. We should be... Okay. If you try to enter the castle... Oh, let me first get this guy. Yeah, what? Sorry about that. Okay. 
See, if you could try to enter the castle through here, you will not, uh, automatically get transported to the dark world. So that is also a entrance. Okay, now I'm going to show you what you normally supposed to do when you get to this bit. Okay. I was afraid of that. I don't have any health yet left, so let's first get to the witch. Because this beeping can be a little annoying. I have to refill my potions anyway, so no problem in taking a little detour. Let's not get killed. Preferably. Okay, let's return to the light world. Fill up my potions and my health. a lot of potions. Alrighty. Let's return to the dark world. Oops, too close to the edge of the screen there. to the bridge. Okay, running to the bridge. These things are a little easier to kill when you stun them. But I'm not gonna bother. They take a lot of hits. Okay, go down here. And down here is another entrance to the dark world. So I'm going to show you. Okay, let's first return to the light world. And there we go. This is uh, near the uh, desert. You can also pound in these sticks. And beneath this little rock is also a entrance of the dark world so that's a good one to remember as well really when you have the hammer you can do all sorts of nice things okay and there are a few caves here that are bombable so let's explore those first before we head to the town Alrighty. there's a guy there it only gives you a uh, red rupee, but I think he gives you a piece of heart or something in the uh, not randomized version. But above him is a bombable wall with a few more goodies, I hope. Like a blue rupee. Oh, cool, and the cane of Samaria. And that one... Enables you to make blocks, which is uh, really nice. Okay. A very useful item. Ah, oh, cool, and this is the Titan Smith. And that is a replacement for the normal power glove. And we can uh, now lift all the rocks in the game, so that's really useful. And another bottle. Cool, so now we have three of the four bottles. And we can do lots of nice things with that Titan Smith. Cool, that's a nice cave. This was, I think, one of the best locations in the entire uh, randomized version. Okay, let's first return to the light world, because that cave is also bombable in the light world. And I didn't do that yet. So, let's do that now. Okay. 
this is uh, sort of an item hunting episode. Hope you don't mind. Oh, there's just a uh, fairy uh, there. And if you go to the bottom of this bit, let's first avoid that guy. There's another cave. It's up here. This is also a bombable wall. So let's do that. And avoid those Octoroks. We'll just kill them. Okay, and now we can kill these guys. And hopefully the door above should open. Cool. And there's a thief here. And he gives you rupees. I think normally also he gets you uh, a piece of heart. Maybe there's some nice things in here. Ah, cool, a piece of heart. And another piece of heart. That's the fun thing about the randomizer. There's uh, sometimes weird things. Cool. So those are some of the hidden caves that are in the, the light world and the dark world. Oops. I mean to get hit there. Okay, we're gonna explore the town now. Because we have a little more time left in this episode. We're not gonna finish a dungeon, but we're gonna maybe explore the town dungeon in the dark world, which is uh, the thief's lair. So, first let's return to the dark world. Alrighty. Yeah, let's head to the town. Oops. Let's kill that guy. Alright. Okay, there's another spot here. Oh, by the way, one thing. Some of these trees have eyes and they follow you around really creepily. But if you hit their nose, boink. They spit out a bomb, so be careful of these uh, guys. Alrighty. Okay. The thing is with these dark world places, you have to watch out for uh, stone circles and uh, weird little hints on the ground that you can uh, travel there to the light world and uh, find a little secret. So, if we do it in this spot, we're on this raised platform that we couldn't get to before. Also a very nice spot. And I think normally there's a piece of heart here as well, so... But red rupees are also... Uh, they come in handy. Okay. And... That's it for now. Let's return to the town. Oh, there's one more important thing here. And let me show you, if I go to the light world, there's this grove here, and there's a flute playing boy, which disappears. Alrighty, and uh, he's trapped in the dark world, because when I travel back to the dark world, using these shimmering tile, I can see him and talk to him. And normally he gives me a shovel, I don't think he will now. So he's turned into a fox-like creature now. And he gives me an item. And it's a piece of heart, okay, that's nice. But uh, it's not a shovel yet. Normally you get the shovel, then you return to the light world and you dig up this place and you find his uh, flute or his ocarina. And then you can rescue him. But uh, I think that one is randomized as well, so... We're going to have to come back to that one. But we got a piece of heart out of it, so... Not a total loss. And now we enter the town. There's a game here where you can shoot arrows. And because we have the Titan Smith, we can lift these rocks now. Very handy. And we can free this guy, which is a frog, and it's one of the two blacksmiths. So let's talk to him. 
and get him to his house. And here we are in the town, the Dark World version. what we're supposed to do with him again. Do we get into the light world? I don't remember. Yeah, he turns into the blacksmith. Okay, cool. And you return him in the light world to his house. And I hope I can get them to temper my sword. Thank you very much, they say. But nothing much else happens. Usually they are grateful and they temper your sword. But I think there is something with those items you get from uh, these guys. Um, let me see. First, go down here. Because we have one more item uh, to try and get. Go up here. There's this mysterious little fountain, and if you sprinkle it with magic dust... You get this little demon, and he says he's gonna... ...do something bad to you. Cool. And now he says, uh, your magic meter is uh, halved. But the thing he really does is, he makes sure that you only use half the magic that you would normally use. So this is in fact a good thing. And you can see in the top left corner there that my magic meter says one half there. So this is a nice little bonus. Too bad we couldn't get our uh, our sword tempered. Which gives your master sword even uh, bigger damage. Okay. Um, one more thing to do. I'm curious what the, the sick boy is doing. Because now we have a, um, an empty bottle. So he should give us an, an item. Normally he gives us the bug catching net. Hello, sick boy. Oh, he now gives us just arrows. So the bug catching net is unfortunately also randomized. Okay. Some of those Mario portraits have uh, rupees in them. Cool. Okay, well, then we uh, just have to find the location of the bug catching net another time. And also the sword, which is kind of a pity. Well, nothing to do about that. Okay, we now return to the Dark Worlds. And we enter one of the dungeons. And we're going to do that dungeon the next time, because uh, we don't have time this episode to uh, to do that. Let's just get one more thing before we do that, shall we? Bomb that. Okay, it's another chest. And more red rupees. And let's kill that guy. Now, if you play the um, the English version, you talk to a guy here in the light world. Let me travel there quickly. Okay. You see, in the light world, this is a normal house, except for this little shed. It's a little lower than the rest. And when you, t when you talk to this guy, he tells you that this used to be the hideout for a gang of thieves. And the leader of the thieves, whose name was Blind, and he hated bright light. So what he did was he dug his entire lair underneath the village. So you see, you can't get in here. But you can get in through the statue here in the middle. If you pull that, the trident, the entrance opens. And we can go to one of the seven dungeons. You see, there's dungeon number four. The uh, order in which you do these doesn't really matter. 
as long as you have items uh, to uh, get through them. So we're going to explore this dungeon in the next episode. And I'd like to thank you for watching the uh, this episode. And of course, if you have any tips or things you'd like to see or things you'd like me to do, please leave them as a comment below. Like this video and uh, subscribe, of course, if you want to get notification if, uh, if I release the next one. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.